serious, it's fun, it's your Catholic drive time. With Joe McLean and Jeremy Alcaraz. Nick Jeevis is the managing editor of the newsroom there. He's a formerly worked as a reporter at large for the Daily Caller, as well as uh, Fox News and many other outlets. And he is with us today to talk about a uh, brand new breaking story, leaked photos coming out of a uh, border detention facility. Nick, welcome to the show. Joe, thanks for having me on. Yeah, praise be to God. Thank you for the, for the time. Let's talk about this story that Project Veritas broke that's uh, making its way around the world today. It must, it must be a very busy time for Project Veritas. Can you give us the details about these leaked photos, their source, the timing, all of that? Yeah, the story was very horrifying, was the word that came to mind as far as the images that we received. And for the listeners that may not know, these images were of migrants at this detention center in Texas, and they were pushed so tightly into the corners of their living spaces, wrapped so tightly in space blankets for warmth that it almost didn't look real. Uh, as far as what happened and, and where it is, this is a facility that Border Patrol completed construction on just over a month ago. It's a 185,000 square foot facility. They have not let, to our knowledge, any nonprofit lawyers conduct any oversight. They won't even let them see these photos that we obtained. We, Veritas, had to obtain them, not the government. And our source, I can't talk too much about the identity of our sources. It's something, it's just something we do. We try to protect them. But according to the source, these photos were taken within the last several days. And they show, at any given time, 3,000 people in custody at this facility. And the source goes on to claim that these illegal immigrants are separated by age or physical size in some cases, that 50 of them were positive for COVID-19, and that not only all this, but there have been multiple sexual assaults, according to the source, normal assaults, and, quote, daily medical emergencies. Uh, it's, it's not a good scene down at the border in Donna, Texas. I, I can say that much from these pictures. Now, it's my understanding that this particular facility, the one at Donna, Texas, where these pictures are coming from, is one of three similar facilities. Is that do you have any information there? As far as that, we, we only covered this particular one with this story in Donna, but um, there are various detention facilities along the border. I can't speak to the, you know, to the shape of the other ones. We, we only have the inside of Donna thus far. But um, there's been silence. There hasn't been a lot of discussion about other detention facilities when these photos came out. So we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. And this, is, this isn't the end of it as well. There's more caravans on their way here, isn't there? That's what we're hearing uh, through various sources, and even other outlets have reported that, that uh, towards the end of the month there is going to be a push to come to the border. And there have been statements made by by. Joe Biden that they should come to the border and, and should try to rush the border. Uh, he kind of has gone back and forth on that. So uh, this happened under Donald Trump as well, the, these caravans. This wouldn't be the first time. So I, I yes, it seems that there is going to be another one um, coming through again soon. Now, I think it, the video came out, was it yesterday of uh, James O'Keefe out in front of this particular facility? Was that yesterday? This was, I think, a few days ago, two, two days ago, maybe several days ago. Um, but, yes, he went to the facility, James O'Keefe, our CEO, and he was just trying to be a journalist, asking questions, uh, inquiries, and he was treated uh, very curtly and told to leave in a manner that was not consistent with what you would think the government would respond to as far as a journalist. So James took to the skies and got in an airplane and flew over the facility so that we could at least have an aerial view of what was going on. And it was all covered. You couldn't see anything from the inside, but you could get, you could gather the enormity of this place and how it was set up, at least from the outside. And uh, it was just, I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen anybody turned away for simply asking a question about public policy. 
Well, looking at these particular images that are posted now on uh, projectveritas.com, we will post a link to it, by the way, dear listeners, so that you can see it for yourself as well. But uh, the videos are uh, – Project Veritas' videos are on their YouTube channel and, and elsewhere as well. Uh, and I highly encourage you to check it out. But uh, it, looking at these pictures, it looks like a, a metal structure covered with a canvas is makes up the the, the building itself. And then there's like a uh, sort of a, a big tube that probably acts like their ventilation system or air conditioning system. St looks like looks like stone floor. Does that is that is that the case? Do I see stone there? So they're sleeping on it, it a seems stone to be. floor. There's certainly no mattresses. No mattresses. St or it's like very few. There's like four, uh, four or five pins inside this building. Uh, everybody's sleeping on stone floor with their with their uh, survival blankets. These are like these is it mylar or like a some sort of a, like a material like a metal material looking that helps to with, with attain body heat. But there's I think there's I see benches around the edge of these uh, little cells. Uh, so you could say at least they're crammed in there. They're, they can't be very comfortable, and they're sleeping on a stone floor. Um, what what kind of response and reaction has Project Veritas received by p publishing this information? Well, it, we, the reactions vary, as you know, uh, from some in person to some on social media to some through email. And I think that there was a shock among at least the people I had spoken to or the, the comments that I had seen personally online. And a lot of them mentioned the children. How, how can you allow children, so many, to get caught up in this, being that they're susceptible to things like fatigue and, and disease? And um, we had mentioned, or I had mentioned in another interview previously, that you know, human trafficking is also a big issue. Um, I think that a lot of people realize that this is about humanity, and that's always been the line with, with immigration policy, and to see people on the floor wrapped up that way, I think it... It shook some people that there was a lack of humanity there. Have you have you got any feedback from people maybe to the left uh, on the perspective, on the political perspective? How do they see this? We, well, I mean, we we always do. Um, I haven't monitored all the comments, so I, I can't uh, give you a direct, honest answer on that. I've only seen a few in passing. You know, the ones that I can speak for, uh, but it was reported by outlets. Uh, other than us, uh, after the fact, and with separate photos, there were other similar photos aired on CNN. So uh, to me, it seems that everyone is in agreement that this is, there's a problem here. And whether or not we agree on how to fix it or, or anyone will opine on how to fix it, I'll leave that to the public and to the lawmakers to, to handle that. But it seems, there doesn't seem to be a lot of partisan divide on the issue. It's the, the voters show it all. These people are suffering. These people are suffering. You know, it is a tragic situation there, and it seems, uh, I thought I heard or read this morning, actually, that the Biden administration has confirmed that they are going to turn back whole families and individuals, but children they will uh, let in. And there's been reports that they're, in some cases, they're considering letting people, they're releasing them even without court dates, uh, which is uh, even greater uh, it's going to exaggerate the situation even worse. Uh, it, what else is coming on this particular topic? I'd like to talk to you about Facebook here in a second, but is there anything else coming out of Project Veritas that you might give us a, a tip about? I can only say stay tuned. We, we let our sources usually dictate the content, and they're the ones, the brave souls that go out there and, and do the job. And uh, I will say really quickly before we go to, to Zuckerberg that anyone out there who may be one of those brave souls or an insider who, does want to share more information on this topic or any others, they can email us at veritastips at protonmail.com. It's veritastips at protonmail.com. But for now, all I can say is stay tuned. Uh, Nick Jeevis is our uh, guest right now. He is the managing editor of the newsroom at Project Veritas, and they broke the story uh, with these uh, leaked photos out of the Border Patrol facility. But last week, there was a, a series of videos that came out, or one big video that came out on Project Veritas about uh, some insiders talking about Zuckerberg and the power of Facebook, Google, and these these oligarchs that uh, these tech oligarchs yeah. that have a lot of power. Uh, tell us about that story um, because I think a lot of people probably just dismiss this as sort of like um, you know crazy talk in many ways. But these tech companies really do wield quite a bit of influence, and I think on that undercover video 
uh, of that insider, that global strategist lead guy, he was talking about uh, the ability for Benny Facebook, Tom. yeah, yeah. For the ability to control the way people think and behave. Tell me about that. Well, he, Benny Thomas, who was, as you said, Facebook's global planning lead, he, we, you know, it's on tape, him saying, I would break up Facebook. That it's, and this is me paraphrasing out, it, that it, they've become so big that they're almost like, and this is actually, quote, separate, um, they should be separate companies, he says. They're so big that they're almost like countries. And it is a quote from him, quote, most people don't understand these things and most people don't think about them, which is why a lot of bleep goes down because a lot of people aren't paying attention. So he really said a lot about what's going on behind the scenes at Facebook. And he compared Mark Zuckerberg to a king. He said, no king in the history of the world has had this kind of power, uh, this rule over 2 billion people. And he went on to, to just, it kept getting worse and worse. He was talking about algorithm bias and how certain algorithms will shut down certain speech and how their AI systems are evolving and becoming more human. I mean, this is something you'd think you'd find out of science fiction or in a 1998 you know, sci-fi movie with Christian Bale. It's real. This is not a joke. And I don't think it's crazy talk. He seemed very lucid in the video and he spoke very plainly about it to the point where he was even, he dropped the word eugenics at one point. So I would encourage your listeners to go and, and watch that. Again, his name is Benny Thomas, and you can find that story on projectveritas.com under the title King Zuck, uh, that's for Zuckerberg. And it was equally as shocking to me as the border story, if not more so. One of the, the points that he made that uh, gave me pause was talking about the lawsuits. There was like 40 some odd states that are suing Facebook right now. And I think there's co other countries that are suing Facebook right now. And he mm -hmm. fluffed it off as, ah, that's no big deal. It's not, it's, it'll take so long for it's that to work new. itself out. It's true. I mean, even dating back to the beginning when I was a reporter of my career, I remember the talk of antitrust lawsuits and state attorney generals trying to move against Facebook. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I can't say whether or not he's right or wrong on if it won't do anything. But I think he is correct in saying that this isn't an, an, a new issue. This isn't reinventing the wheel. States have tried to go after Facebook and you know, Amazon and big tech and companies such as that. So um, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully more of these videos come out so that the public can decide with all the information that's out there. All right. Nick Jeevis, managing editor of the newsroom at the Project Veritas. Thanks for your time today. We're very grateful to you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you, too. Praise be to God. That's going to do it for that section, but don't go anywhere. We have a lot more kind of drive time headed your way. We'll be right back.